We are both uh, artists and uh, we are dealing with these issues also not only as uh, curators but also as, as artists and I did uh, a variety of different projects uh, since 2008 uh, related to the crisis because uh, the theme of economy uh, is also a very central theme in my work since about 1998 and I also have been looking a lot uh, uh, into alternatives uh, to capitalism, so I did a major project called Alternative Economics, Alternative Societies that started in 2003, which is a collection of different theoretical uh, concepts and models for an uh, organization of uh, a non-capitalist society. So I would only like to present uh, three uh, projects now. Uh, the first one is called uh, Too Big to Fail, and you can see it already uh, in the uh, background. It's a huge vortex, and as you probably know, uh, the, the uh, phrase Too Big to Fail was continuously used by politicians uh, all around uh, the world uh, to somehow argue, to make a public argument of, of why it is uh, possible, why it is necessary to uh, bail out the bank. The argument was uh, if we would not bail out uh, the banks now, uh, then it would be even more harmful for uh, the economy and therefore for all of the people. And uh, yeah, this too big to fail uh, has been used here in this vortex. And if you look closer to it, uh, the piece was actually done, on, the letters are actually done on the basis of uh, photographic work I did uh, uh, in March 28, uh, 2009. There was a series of protests all over Europe and I think also in the US. And this, uh, the protesters marched under the common slogan, we will not pay for your crisis. And I think if you uh, build uh, the, um, an image uh, saying too big to fail uh, on the basis of such a imagery, you also uh, change the meaning of the phrase uh, immediately and somehow expresses my, uh, my wish that uh, those people who uh, stand up against this dominant way of how uh, the political order looks out looks not nowadays that they will become at some point to be free. And um, the way of how uh, the politicians in charge managed uh, this uh, financial and economic crisis, I think, led towards a uh, uh, huge destabilization of uh, fundamental structures of the representative uh, democracy, uh, because when you have elections and no matter for whom you vote, the only thing you get is a bailout of banks, then it doesn't make any sense at all anymore to consider elections as anything meaningful. And uh, also different uh, uh, statistics show that uh, the debt uh, goes uh, always down the, the, uh, the con uh, how do you call it, uh, the conviction that uh, representative democracy somehow represents the opinion of the of the people. So uh, elections as the central as a central element uh, of representative democracy. Uh, yeah, I, I think to a certain extent uh, extent can be considered as a con. And this term elections are a con. This, this is the wall text you can see here in the back of this installation. Um, um, it's actually a slogan from May 1968, and uh, presenting it nowadays, uh, yeah, um, it also raises the question in as far as it's got a different meaning uh, uh, also due to the financial and economic crisis. Uh, central for my artistic work, it is also always not only to give um, an analysis or a critique of the uh, current system, but of course the focus on different uh, alternatives, alternative ways of organizing. Uh, and what I did at the beginning of 2012 is a, a serious 
of uh, three films which I recorded in Madrid, in Athens, and in New York with the square movements in these cities or Occupy movement in New York. And I invited uh, activists, uh, central activists of these movements uh, to talk about uh, a set of questions I prepared for them. So these were 10 questions, and uh, I gave all the same 10 questions to uh, all these uh, small uh, assemblies I, I put together. So I asked uh, five to six people to meet together, usually in central squares that also had a, a specific meaning for uh, the occupations, like Syntagma uh, uh, Square in Athens, for example and uh, ask them to discuss on uh, ways of uh, organizing on how assemblies are being structured about direct decision making processes about the meaning and the function of occupation and also about the meaning and function of occupation at the time when the occupations were already over because at the time that i recorded it actually all of them were already evicted um, so here in the background, you can see an image of an, uh, a presentation of the piece in the Reina Sofia Museum in uh, Madrid. And I would like to present a four-minute excerpt of one of the films uh, to just to give you an idea of how they look. And oh, all right. So for a technical reason, I think we skip this part and you're welcome to check out my webpage, uh, wrestler.at and if you look at the, this work, and you will find a six minute uh, sample of this film. Uh, Greg, you actually So I'm gonna do three things and uh, we're gonna switch to computers while I'm, while I'm speaking, I think. Uh, I wanted to mention just a little bit more about the book in terms of its content and why we did the book. Part of the reason was to think about this art project, not just as, a, as an exhibition with visual artists, but to really expand the concept into kind of a more of a research platform. And so we invited a series of theorists to either write original pieces or provide us with pieces that were relevant to the content of the book. And that, of course, included Slavoj Zizek, as I mentioned before, Judith Butler, Brian Holmes, who wrote a piece called Art After Capitalism, uh, John Roberts, who's a British Theorist David Graeber, who you probably know, who's sometimes called the the grandfather of Occupy or the godfather of Occupy, or whatever. And uh, Kristen Stockmeyer, who's an art historian doing really interesting work out of Germany. And then uh, also Oliver and myself, we wrote a piece, of course. There are also, in addition to these theoretical texts, sections that talk about the actual work that's in the exhibition up to that point, to the point that the book was produced. Obviously, the newer works were not in there. And we have some review sections as well about, about that. Uh, and it was published by Pluto Press out of the UK. So it's really jam-packed. Uh, if you think I'm trying to pitch the book to you so you buy it, you're right. There'll be copies at the exhibition. Um, just want to really quickly talk a little bit of, about some of the activity that's going on in New York. More, less about sort of activists focusing outside, but focusing more about the relationship between artistic labor and the crisis that's going on. So if we could just switch to the next slide. Thank you. Um, okay, so Occupy Museums is an organization that came out of the Occupy movement. They're also involved in the debt fair that Lowell showed you. So they've been sort of thinking about, you know, what happens to most of the artists who are turned out of art schools, right? They, they're produced, hundreds, thousands of artists every year are produced by art schools, and the majority of them are never seen. They're almost completely invisible. So they've tried to sort of address this question. Maybe you can just show the next image. And one way they did was propose an exhibition that would be much like an art fair, but behind the walls, are a series of works by artists who would never be shown in the, in the uh, actual art fair. And this would be what's hidden behind the walls, so to speak. And of course, the walls are cut away in a way that looks a bit like uh, sort of Russian constructivism or something. If you go to the next slide, 
another example where artworks are along the top edge of a kind of art fair situation. And uh, you know, again, this is a proposal by this group, uh, Occupy Museums slash uh, Debt Fair. And I'm going to just take this prophylactic here. <laughs> Close up. Again. Another organization that's come out, uh, really, actually, this started before the crisis, but it really got a tremendous amount of uh, sort of generation after the crisis happened, is Working Artists for the Greater Economy, or WAGE. And they are in the United States proposing that any organization, an institution that gets money from the state, city, state, whatever, has to try, has to sort of pay artists fairly, has to do kind of a fair payment. And you might say, well, of course, but that doesn't happen in the United States. Often people receive a lot of money from the state, and very little, if any, goes to the artists who participate in the exhibitions. Some of you who are artists might know, you know, it's like, well, we're giving you a space to show what, you know, what you want to be paid to, what an honor you have, right? So they're trying to sort of get this going. If you look at the next slide, they did a, a survey in which they asked artists, do you get paid? How much do you get paid? Or, and they also asked institutions, how much do you pay people? How much do you pay administrators? And then the next slide, they're creating this certification that the, the, uh, those institutions that pay their artists fairly will be able to put on their wall. And basically, we can say, yeah, that's a good institution. It's sort of a shaming uh, situation. Of course, one of the drawbacks of this in New York City is that most of the art world is commercial, and you can't really, uh, you know, sort of regulate that except again through some kind of shaming campaign, which is very, very complicated. Uh, the last section I want to talk about, and then I want to read something to you after that, is about a project that I'm involved with with a group of artists out of, out of New York, but around the world as well, and it's actually taking place. It's focused uh, much closer to where we are now, which is the Gulf region. So this is Sajid Island, outside Abu Dhabi. Sajid means island of happiness. And as some of you who follow the news may know, the, um, thank you. And it's, the group is called Gulf Labor Coalition. Uh, some of you may know that the workers who are brought to Sajid Island to do labor, coming from southern part of Asia, in particular Bangladesh, India, etc., are really drastically underpaid Often their, their passports are confiscated until they uh, pay back pin money they paid uh, in order to sort of uh, leave. They sometimes get themselves arrested so they can be deported. And if they try to organize as workers, they're severely de uh, dealt with. And so a group of us artists have uh, realized that the Guggenheim Museum wants to build a new museum in Abu Dhabi. And we said, OK, they want this brand. They want artists to participate in it. We're going to make this a leveraging issue, and we call for a boycott of the museum in Abu Dhabi. Gulf Labor Coalition. This is what the museum is supposed to look like. Of course, it's a Frank Gehry. It's enormous. It's a model. It's like, you know, who knows where they They haven't broken ground yet. These are the workers coming to work. They're literally in a kind of concentration camp-like situation. Now, we visited the camp a few years ago. It's like a very nice prison. You know, they're far from their families, they have no contact with their families, they're in the middle of the desert, so they can't even go anywhere if they wanted to, and that's how it is. But we only saw the camp that they wanted us to see. There's a lot of subcontractors who are treating the workers even worse. This is the housing, it's sort of prefabbed housing, and this is one of the actions that Gulf Labor did. This is one that I took part in, and my associate, Matthew Greco, um, Actually, what you see here is a nice little tchotchke. Do you have that word here? It's a Yiddish word. It means a little something, right? So at Christmas time, the Guggenheim Museum puts these little models of the museum out in little plastic containers for $20, and it's essentially something you hang on your Christmas tree. We did a 3D print of the workers' housing and put it in a little package, too, except the package also contained information about what was going on in Abu Dhabi. Then we went to the Guggenheim's gift shop in New York, and we shop dropped them, which is the opposite of shop lifted. We left packages all over the place at several of the gift shops in the museum. Now here's the strange thing. A couple of weeks later, somebody checked and they were still there. 
So we even put a barcode on it, right? So maybe some of them were sold. We don't even know, right? Finally, they got wind of this and they disappeared and off the shelf. But who knows, right? So this was one of 52 actions that took place over the last year against uh, the situation in Abu Dhabi. And more recently, we're going into more direct actions, and we're doing something called countdown towards the building of this new museum. And so people are actually entering the museum and unfurling banners, as you can see here, talking about uh, the labor situation. They're often torn down very quickly by the uh, guards, but for a moment we get it, and then of course it's in the press. And that's really, really what matters. We have managed to get them to hire an outside, uh, of, you know, sort of um, inspector from Price Waterhouse Cooper, and we've really pushed the museum hard on this. Um, we still feel it has to go further because the inspector has no teeth. There's, you know, he can or she can say, "Well, here's a problem," or "There's a problem." There's no way to enforce uh, what they might have found in Abu um, Dhabi, and that's really what we want to push for before we uh, give up on our uh, campaign. And as you may know, New York University and also the Louvre also have facilities there. Uh, thirdly, very quickly, uh, I came here from uh, Warsaw, from Poland, and on the airplane, I was paging through you know, the magazine, and I just had to sort of read just a bit of this to you, which was in the center of the magazine. Cyprus, on the road to recovery, business opportunities in the island and exceeding international expectations with a projection to return growth in 2015, Cyprus is making steady progress in restructuring its economy. And it goes on to talk about in the wake of the world crisis, how everything is going along just swimmingly. After a period of uncertainty, the banking system, the banks have been successfully recapitalized and restructured. Bank supervision has been considerably strengthened and the banking sector is now in a position to withstand shocks. And it goes on to talk about privatization, investor incentives, professional services, energy, and tourism, all the things that you might want to do to invest in your island. So I thought you'd I'll just share that with you. <laughs> Thank you. Not, not from Frank Gehry, no. Um, we don't, we, we've heard that Frank Gehry actually has someone on his staff, a lawyer, who tries to deal with the labor issues, and he has, he's conscious of it, and he's been trying to do something. We don't know what the extent of that is. We don't know much about it. He's made no contact with us. Um, yeah. But by the way, he was interviewed here again recently, and there was no mention of it. It's very interesting, yeah. I mean, if anybody knows him, please <laughs> tell me, because we would love to get at least in contact and, and have to, you know, at least let him know and talk to him, but we haven't had any. You may have heard Zaha Hadid, who did another structure there, was interviewed, and she said something rather, you know, abusive about the workers. Although I've heard more recently that may have been taken out of context a bit, but uh, nevertheless, uh, one way or the other, we feel that these star architects, as we call them, you know, star architects, really do need to take responsibility for what's going on or what's being built. I mean, what a fabulous opportunity, a place that's making billions of dollars a week saying, come and build anything you want. We're not going to tell you how you can build it, you can do anything. Sure, of course, I mean, your eyes widen, but you also have to be conscious that the Gulf region has become one of the major sectors for this kind of migrant, underpaid labor that capitalism is now in this incredible crisis and it's one of the ways it's, it's trying to sort of you know, sort that out. So there'll be, another, there'll be more focus on this in, in the weeks ahead through our group and other places. Uh, I think on that matter, uh, things are a little bit changing since uh, a number of articles appears as well uh, for example, with the FIFA, with uh, you know, with the sports uh, organization, yeah. uh, be contested uh, yeah. by the silence around this subject, and especially in France, the numbers of articles are increasing that put the Louvre Museum as well to publish a series of potential uh, action they might do in order to sensible uh, to have a better condition for the workers. Uh, building as well the second loop there, uh, as, which is the, the second biggest uh, project there. So uh, the sensibilization, at least in the media, I've been, even though it might be a superficial one, 
uh, you know, moving the, the, the public to this uh, aspect, the, this problematic around the social media. Yeah, that's good to hear. We, we tried very hard to reach out to activists and artists and art historians in Paris because the Guggenheim is, is going to put up contemporary work. Several of the people in our group are people that the Guggenheim very much wants to have in that exhibition because they're from the Middle East, like Wadi Rab, for example. But with the, with the Lula, it's like, okay, who do you go to? Well, we've got art historians. Amazingly, we couldn't really generate any interest. Uh, we tried very hard to get people to, to, to act. So it's very good to hear that yeah, maybe yeah. now, well, of course, it's a little bit after the fact because one of the buildings has been constructed, as you said. Uh, but, it, you know, it's terrific. And I think our aim, in a sense, is to say, listen, Guggenheim, you could become like a, a model of how labor practices could be done in this region. Yeah. Show everybody. But that's why, mm -hmm. that's why the Lupa had to react as well, because in yeah. terms of image. Exactly. Uh, in the long run, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not a positive, uh, you know, it's, aspect that you know, will be exactly. there. So. Yeah. I mean, what, these, what the Gulf wants, what the... Uh, but we are first know. expecting from the FIFA, from the yeah. sports, Yes. Entire, uh, you know, empire in yeah. terms of money. How they will go on with those new rules in order to protect the social worker there? So exactly. the art world should editate from this, uh, you know, initiative. Yeah, it's, it's a, there's a convergence of, of that. Kind of, uh, but the, you know, the Emirates wants to buy these brands. Yeah, and they want. They, you know, yes. And they want to get them as cheap as they can. We have to make it uh, expensive. Yeah, but people so are dying that. anymore. I mean, it's not yeah. only to be yeah. cut from the family. Exactly. So. Yeah. So, anything else?